The first ceasefire attempted in Ukraine to evacuate civilians collapses after just a few hours. Vladimir Putin warns the West on no-fly zones, while Volodymyr Zelensky calls for the implementation of humanitarian corridors. A border town in Poland has become the first stop for the massive influx of Ukrainian refugees fleeing the war in their home country. Thousands of people around the world join together in support of Ukrainians. Italian police seize more than 140 million euros in Russian oligarch assets. The first ceasefire attempted in Ukraine to evacuate civilians collapsed after just a few hours on Saturday. Airstrikes and artillery fire quickly resumed in the Black Sea port city of Mariupol. The ceasefire was also supposed to cover the eastern city of Volnovaka, but it failed there too. At 11.45, the Russian Federation started shelling Volnovaka with heavy weapons. As you know, from 9 a.m. on the 5th of March, we had a preliminary agreement that we would create two humanitarian corridors in Volnovaka and Mariupol. I want to confirm the fact that Russia has violated agreements reached with the mediation of the Red Cross, did not fulfill the agreement and is shelling Volnovaka. After 10 days of fighting, Russian forces now occupy parts of the north, east and south. Meanwhile, on the outskirts of Kiev, soldiers have been helping civilians cross a road bridge as they try to escape the city of Irpin, which has been shelled by the Russians. The military deliberately blew up the bridge to slow down Russian troops advancing on the capital. As Russian helicopters continue to take to the skies of Ukraine, Vladimir Putin has said Moscow will consider any country which seeks to impose a no-fly zone as a participant in the conflict. At a meeting with Aeroflot employees, the Russian president also said the current situation does not yet merit the introduction of martial law. Martial law can be declared in the event of aggression from outside. I hope that it will not happen, despite irresponsible statements by some officials. We hear about the need to close the airspace over the territory of Ukraine. It cannot be done. It is impossible to do from within Ukraine itself. It is possible to do it from a neighboring state, but any movement in this direction will be considered by us as participation in the armed conflict. In his daily address to the nation, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky urged his fellow countrymen to stay and continue their fight, while saying he'd endeavor to make humanitarian corridors a reality to save the lives of the elderly women and children. We are doing everything on our part to make the agreement work. This is one of the main tasks for today. Let's see if we can go further in the negotiation process. On a visit to Poland, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Washington is to allocate another 2.5 billion euros on humanitarian aid. Ukrainian refugees arrive in Poland with light bags but a heavy burden. Stepping down on Polish soil means safety but also sadness for entire worlds left behind. At one of the main arrival hubs along the border in Przemysl, Buses line up to bring passengers to destination. Mainly women and children get off. Men stay to fight. I want to go home. I want to go back to Kiev, to my apartment. I don't want to go anywhere. Look at what Putin is doing to us. It could happen to anyone. Anyone. All paths cross here. People come from all over Ukraine with the same exhausting journeys. Alina is a dentist from Zaporizhia. She has just learned the nuclear plant near her city was bombed. I lost my home and I lost my normal life. I had a job there, but now I need 
now I need to run away from my country because some crazy person won't... I don't know what he wants. Refugees wait in the cold. For many, this is only a stopover towards destinations still unknown. Ну, на самом деле, никто этого не ожидал. Это все очень внезапно и резко произошло. No one expected this. It all happened so fast. Personally, I still can't believe it. The whole world is talking about it. And it's scary to think that something like this can happen in the 21st century. I believe in our men, those who volunteer to defend our country. I think that we will win because Russia fights with the army and we fight with the people. В России как бы воюет армия, а у нас народ. Some spend just hours here waiting for the next bus, but others need to stay. This is an old supermarket. It's been turned into a reception center. Refugees arrive at any moment. They arrive continuously from the border by bus. They wait for other buses to take them to other locations, or some of them spend the night here. 700,000 refugees have crossed into Poland in the first 10 days of war. Polish authorities are trying to adapt fast to face the Ukrainian exodus. This reception center was opened within days. The UNHCR says an escalation of the conflict could drive the number of refugees up to 4 million. On Saturday, thousands of Ukrainian residents of the Russian sea city of Kyrgyzstan took to the streets to demonstrate against the presence of the Russian troops. This example was followed around the world and in Paris several thousand people gathered at the Place de la République to show their support for Ukraine and to demonstrate their opposition to the Russian invasion. In Lisbon, demonstrators made a human chain connecting the embassies that sit on the UN Security Council and demanded an end to the war. Some 29,000 Ukrainians reside in Portugal, making it one of the largest foreign communities in the country. I am here out of solidarity and also because what is happening makes me very sad. I also went through this kind of situation when I had to leave Angola. So I understand very well the situation of these Ukrainian women and children. This is why I'm here. Protesters in London's Trafalgar Square demanded support for Ukraine. Speakers addressed the crowd and led the demonstrators in the chant Stand with Ukraine and Air Defense for Ukraine. It was the same picture in Rome as thousands filled the streets on Saturday afternoon waving flags, holding banners and speakers declaring their solidarity with Ukraine and their desire for the war to end. Thousands of people marched through the streets to the city centre in Zurich on Saturday morning, demanding an immediate ceasefire, the continuation of diplomatic negotiations and the withdrawal of Russian troops. In Tokyo, the crowd shouted, Stop war, protect lives, while some held signs that read, We stand with Ukraine and stop Putin. Italian police have seized a luxury yacht called Lady M with a price tag of 65 million euros, which is owned by Russia's richest man, Alexei Mordashov. This was the most valuable item in a number of seizures of villas and yachts worth a combined total of 143 million euros, taken from five high-profile Russians who were placed on a sanctions list following Moscow's attack on Ukraine. The luxury properties were sequestered in some of Italy's most prestigious locations, including the island of Sardinia, Lake Como in Lombardy and Lucca in Tuscany, while the two super yachts, including Lady M, were grabbed at their moorings in northern ports. Workers at the Tranmere oil terminal on the River Mersey near Liverpool have refused to take delivery of the Russian crude oil, calling for the government to close a loophole allowing foreign flagships to deliver the fuel. And as Western sanctions mount, home rental firm Airbnb and online travel agency Booking Holdings are the latest global corporations to suspend trading with Russia. Sanctions have forced Russia's flagship airline Aeroflot to announce an end to almost all of its international flights. From Tuesday, it'll only fly to neighbouring Belarus, one of Russia's few European allies. Before the war in Ukraine, it used to fly to 146 cities in 52 countries across the world. What happens next to the planes that Aeroflot has leased from foreign companies but are sitting on the tarmac at Russian airports is unclear. But the European Union has given them until March 28th to end any rental contracts in Russia.